Uh, we're looking at even more launches of Starship this year with tons of exciting firsts starting today. Flight 7 has a lot in store from Starship's next generation upper stage design on its first flight today to deploying the first simulated Starlink satellites and the second booster catch attempt. We're kicking off 2025 in style here in the Lone Star State. So hold on to your butts because it's going to be a wild year. And it's all ramping up as we chase after that full reusability for the world's biggest rocket. And we're going to be with you today every step of the way. All Attention all flight crew members, flight is go for launch. It's been just over a month since flight five. The goal is to get that turnaround time down to hours. Stage separation. 30 seconds, no catch decision. Booster offshore diver. Tune in and watch the ship fly around planet Earth. Relight demo startup. And shut down. Starship is at 100 kilometers altitude. Flaps now have control of the vehicle. Starship has started the subsonic belly flop. So, everything starts off, as always, with liftoff. The Super Heavy igniting those 33 Raptor engines. Super Heavy going to power us through that initial ascent, get Starship on its way to space uh, before we get to the hot stage maneuver. Exactly. The ship will then ignite engines while it's still attached to the booster. That will allow us to separate the two stages. That booster will leave a few engines on for that flip and uh, return back here uh, to Starbase for a catch at the launch tower. And while booster catch is blowing our minds, ship keeps going all the way to space, gets into its suborbital trajectory. Got a couple on orbit things. We're going to deploy our first test satellites, also going to relight a Raptor engine while in space. That all sets us up then for re-entry. Uh, as we have seen on the previous flights, uh, courtesy of Starlink, that re-entry period gives us such gorgeous views. It's like, a, uh, you know, just a rainbow flow of colors um, as the ship re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. The ship will relight its engines, perform a flip maneuver for a soft water landing in our targeted location in the Indian Ocean. And then something really cool has me super excited we're going to be deploying 10 Starlink simulators that are similar in size to our next generation Starlink satellites with pretty unparalleled payload capacity and full reusability. Starship's going to be able to deploy our more advanced V3 Starlink satellites. Skyters are going to be on the same suborbital trajectory as Starship, and they're expected to demise upon entry. Starship itself, its trajectory looks very similar to all of our last several flights, suborbital, splashdown targeted into the Indian Ocean, a couple hundred miles off the western coast of Australia. Uh, and then the other on-orbit thing we're doing is going to be relighting a single Raptor engine while in space. We knocked that out last time. V2 ship new propellant system. Let's do it again on this one. Ship's going to be busy. Uh, now, of course, we can't forget to add that today's super heavy booster is reflying proven, uh, is reflying flight proven hardware for the first time. A Raptor engine that flew on the booster that was caught during Starship's fifth flight test. You can see it there on your screen. Uh, this flight proven engine, we've got Raptor 314 there, hence why there's a piece of pie <laughs> on this nozzle. Maybe we can get that image rotated so you can see it a little bit better. 
propellant transfer to refuel in orbit in preparation for these long trips. With milestones like ship catch and in-orbit prop transfer coming up, 2025 promises to be huge for Starship and our journey to Mars, with our first trip currently planned for the end of 2026. <laughs> Between the reusability, low cost, and heavy lift capabilities, this all comes together to help us deliver up to 100 people at a time to destinations both near and far, and to deliver payloads farther and at a lower cost than any other vehicle. The ship, which has six Raptor engines, and the Super Heavy Booster, which has 33 Raptor engines. The Raptor engine is a reusable methane oxygen staged combustion engine that powers the Starship system and has twice the thrust of the Falcon 9 Merlin engine. Big Starship is. We can start here. Let's take a person about two meters tall. Towering over that, you got your Millennium Falcon clocking in at 35. Just above that, we've got a Falcon 9 rocket payload fairing attached. Double that height, you're up at 70 meters. And then topping it all off, nearly twice the size. It's a fully stacked Starship up to 123. You've got two meters taller. Uh, it, altogether, the ship, 52 meters, super heavy boosters, 71. And what's super fun is we're going to make ship and booster even taller in the future. Several minutes, main thing you're watching at is kind of you kind of set a clock because so, your temperatures will change and the fuel in the locks, everything pretty quickly. So you've got a couple of minutes that you can hang out and figure things out. There are items that if we pass them, we're scrubbed for the day. One of the main, one, uh, one of the main ones is that flame deflector uh, at the bottom of the launch mount. Water begins flowing for that at the T minus 10 second mark. If we scrub at any point after that, we'll be done for the day. And then team, new ship, new year, a lot of upgrades doing a lot of ambitious things in space this time. <laughs> Our first payload deploy, relighting a Raptor engine. Uh, yeah. We're, we're looking good. So as we mentioned before, we have an opportunity to hold at T minus 40 seconds, not tracking any issues at the moment that uh, would be. Flight director give the final go for launch. So we're under a minute. As we said, we're not expecting a hold at T minus 40. Um, but do not be shocked if that happens. It has happened in the past, and we can hang out there for a couple of minutes if we need to. If memory serves me right, we... we hold my breath for four <laughs> seconds. Pass through prop load gate. All right, we pass right through that prop load gate. Hot diggity dog. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let our flight director, Ty Huntington, take flight it away. Flight go for launch. And 20 seconds. Two minus 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, we're more than 30 seconds into flight. Telemetry showing 33 out of 33 engines as it's pitching down range. Booster, ship, avionics, power, and telemetry nominal. Here are good call outs on the ship and booster avionics. You just heard the rumble hitting us about six miles away. Watching Starship arc into just endless blue skies right now. Vehicle supersonic. More than a minute into flight, the vehicle supersonic. Max Q. So we just passed through Max Q. That's the greatest stress the vehicle is going to experience on the way uphill. It's heard the call out for booster uh, right, engine Nico. cutoff. Engine startup. Most engines cut off down to those Stage middle separate. three. Start up. Heavy booster. 
Now we've shut down the engines for that boost back burn. That confirms boost, uh, stage separation as well as a controlled boost back burn and hot stage um, as well. So we're looking good for that so far. Some great views there from the ship of Earth. That looks incredible. <laughs> Again, the booster is currently making its way back to the tower today. So we're looking forward to a booster catch with the chopsticks. And in the meantime, you can see those grid fins there helping to control the vehicle and guide it back to its landing site. Booster FTS is saved. Now with that, we're gonna hand it back. How's it going over there, Dan and Kate? How are you doing, Kate, seeing that in person? Um, <laughs> you know, uh, Dan had to take that entire segment because I couldn't talk. That was there, incredible. There it is. We can see the booster coming back in now through the plume. At least it looks that way to us. Um, it's incredible that it basically returns. It looks like a speeding, um, just like Ship this silver nominal. flare uh, coming back to the, the, once again, we are standing by for uh, 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 attempting to catch the booster at the tower. This would be the second tower catch. Booster landing, landing burn. burn. See it, 13 engines. Booster now hovering as it aligns with the tower for catch. Booster coming in. Get down ready to, for that boom, Kate. Down to three engines. Booster ready for trip out. Megadora has caught the booster. You heard it here, Vexilla has caught the booster. Once again, for the second time, a successful catch by the launch tower. This is the same tower, the launch pad, where that booster took off from just seven and a half minutes ago. Great view from the well chopstick arms, looking at those hypersonic grid fins that steer the booster. For that is just absolutely stunning. And this, of course, uh, a gorgeous view there from the tower looking down at the top of the booster. All right, and we are tracking. Now we're standing by for um, views from the ship, but who can take their eyes off of that incredible sight? That is once again the second tet catch of a booster back at the launch tower. Uh, it was incredible to see it come back down. Uh, just um, so, I mean, that is essentially telling us that we had an anomaly with, with that upper stage. Um, so we were just coming up to the end of that ascent burn for the ship uh, when we stopped until, or when we um, started to lose uh, couple of the engines we saw those dropping out and then we did lose uh, telemetry from the ship so that means we didn't have contact with it so at this point we are assuming that the ship has been lost um, <laughs> I, this, this is this is not right. Something happened. This exploded. 